Hello everyone, Noxious here, and welcome to another installment of my series, Machine Spotlight, where we take an in-depth look at some of the new and returning machines in Horizon Forbidden West. In this installment, we'll be shining the spotlight on the Claw Strider. The Claw Strider most closely resembles a Deinonychus or Velociraptor. Key similarities include its large, sickle-shaped claws on each foot and its artificially feathered appearance. The Claw Strider is also quite limber, able to scale large vertical obstacles with relative ease and leap over a substantial distance in battle. Two additional elemental variants of the Claw Strider can be encountered, the Fire Claw Strider and the Acid Claw Strider. While the regular variant relies solely on melee attacks, both elemental variants are capable of deadly ranged attacks thanks to their bomb launchers. The Claw Strider makes Horizon history as the very first and as of now the only combat class mount. Aloy is not the only one who can take advantage of this, however, as the Rebels, including Regala herself, have been seen successfully overriding the Claw Strider to ride into battle. Unfortunately, it is not as fast of a mount as many would have hoped. It owns the title of slowest mount in the game. In this video, I will cover everything you need to know about the Claw Strider and its variants, including its locations, weak points, combat strategies, and more. If you find yourself enjoying this video, do me a favor by hitting the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Let's get started with the Claw Strider's locations on the map. There are a total of 10 sites on the map. In the interest of keeping this video under the length of a feature length film, I will only be reviewing the marked machine sites, starting with the regular variants. The first site is located directly north of the Utaru Capital Plainsong. Here, you can find a few Claw Striders in a trench with no other machines in the immediate area. The second site is just east of the Tanakh Camp Shearside Climb. Here, you can find some Claw Striders within earshot of the nearby Thunderjaw. The third site is located directly west of the Tanakh Camp Skies Sentry. Here, you can find a few Claw Striders nestled between a Scorcher site and a Tremor Tusk site. The fourth site can be found in the hills directly east of the Tanakh prison, The Rot. Here, you can find a few Claw Striders with a nearby Bellowback site as well. The fifth and final regular variant site is located on the beach just north of The Rot. Here, you can find some Claw Striders with no other machines in the area. Next, let's look at the Acid Claw Strider sites. The first site is located directly south of the Tanakh capital, The Grove. Here you can encounter a few Acid Claw Striders with no other machines nearby. The second site is located in the mountains just west of Shearside Climb. Here you can find the largest gathering of Claw Striders in a single site. The third and final Acid Claw Strider site lies in the snow-covered cliffs overlooking Cauldron Kappa. Along with some Acid Claw Striders, a Shellwalker convoy frequently passes through and there is a surprise for anyone looking for loot in the nearby ruins. Now let's look at the two Fire Claw Strider sites. Both of these sites are located in the ruins of San Francisco. The first site is located directly north of the beach where Aloy initially comes ashore. Here you can find a couple of Fire Claw Striders as well as some Fire Fanghorns. The only other site is located to the north of the Dig Site. Here you can find a pair of Fire Claw Striders. This site was featured in one of the early gameplay trailers for Horizon Forbidden West and was one of the first times the Claw Striders were showcased. I know I said I wouldn't list any unmarked sites, but I wanted to share my favorite with you. It's located east of the Tanakh capital Thornmarsh, labeled as a behemoth site. In addition to the lone behemoth, you can also find three random elemental claw striders. Next, let's review the machine catalog entry for the claw strider and its variants. Claw Strider, a level 16 combat midweight machine, a fast and agile combat machine covered in razor sharp blades. It is often encountered in small packs and is capable of a variety of deadly melee attacks. It is weak versus shock damage and strong versus acid damage. Now let's briefly look at the data points for the other variants of the Claw Strider, the Fire Claw Strider and the Acid Claw Strider. The Fire and Acid Claw Striders are both level 22 combat midweight machines. 
The Fire Claw Strider lobs blaze bombs from afar and uses a variety of powerful fire-based attacks. It is weak versus purge water damage and strong versus acid damage. The Acid Claw Strider lobs acid bombs from afar and uses a variety of powerful acid-based attacks. It is weak versus shock and plasma damage and strong versus acid damage. Next we'll review the data points for the Apex variants of each. The Apex Claw Strider is a level 26 combat midweight machine and is distinguishable by black and gold armor plates and purple muscles. It is weak versus shock damage and strong versus acid and plasma damage. Loot unique to this variant is its Apex Claw Strider Heart. The Apex Fire and Acid Claw Striders are classified as level 35 combat midweight machines, and they are also distinguishable by their black and gold armor plates and purple muscles. The Apex Fire Claw Strider is weak versus purge water damage and strong versus fire and acid damage. While the Apex Acid Claw Strider is weak versus plasma damage and also strong versus fire and acid damage. Unique loot for the Apex Fire and Acid Claw Striders are their Apex Elemental Claw Strider Hearts. Now we'll review the Claw Strider's various weak points. A weak point all variants of the Claw Strider share are their resource containers. These containers sit atop the machine's haunches just behind the saddle. Tear off the protective plates then detach to collect their contents. Weak points unique to the regular variant include its Sparker and Razor Tail. The Sparker lies within the Claw Strider's chest protected by metal plates and serves as shock storage. Remove the metal plates, then either detach to collect the resource or shoot with the well-aimed shock arrow to detonate and inflict the shocked state. The Razor Tail consists of extremely sharp metal blades that the Claw Strider uses as a primary melee weapon. Detach it to disable melee attacks as well as provide yourself with a key upgrade resource for your gear. Now let's look at the weak points unique to the Fire Claw Strider. The Blaze Sack is located on the machine's chest protected by armor plates and acts as blaze storage. Destroy it to disable fire attacks and inflict the burning state or leave it intact to add elemental Claw Strider sack webbing to the carcass which is used as a key upgrade resource. The Blaze Bomb Launcher sits at the end of the Fire Claw Strider's tail, which it uses to launch powerful Blaze Bombs and to enhance its tail attacks. Detach it to prevent these attacks, as well as provide yourself with a usable heavy weapon. When detached, it holds 8 incendiary explosive rounds. Finally, let's look at the weak points unique to the Acid Claw Strider. A Metal Bite Sack sits within the machine's chest in place of the Sparker or Blaze Sack. Destroy it to disable acid attacks and to inflict the corrosive state, or leave it intact to add Elemental Claw Strider Sack Webbing to the carcass. The Acid Bomb Launcher acts similar to the Fire Claw Strider's Blaze Bomb Launcher, however with acid instead. Duh. Detach it to prevent its acid bomb attacks and to use as a heavy weapon for yourself. Once again, it holds 8 explosive noxious rounds. Next, let's familiarize ourselves with the Claw Strider's range of attacks. Watch out for its deadly tail swiping attack. Execute a well-timed dodge to avoid the effects of its concussive screech. At medium range, it'll start its series of lunging bite attacks. Even if you dodge the first, stay on guard. And watch out for its aerial claw slash attack. At close range, it'll go in for a friendly high five. Oh, too slow. Now let's look at the attacks unique to the elemental claw striders. Keep dodging to the side to avoid the fire claw striders barrage of fire. Bowels. It powers up the majority of its melee attacks with fire damage. When it loses enough health, it'll erupt in flames, adding AoE damage. Watch out for his signature Blaze Bomb Launcher attack. The Acid Claw Strider uses similar attacks, albeit with acid. Watch out for its noxious bowels. It also powers up its melee attacks with acid damage. 
When it loses enough health, it will erupt in noxious fumes, adding AoE acid damage. Watch out for its signature acid bomb launcher attack. All variants of the Claw Strider can indeed be overridden once you have completed Cauldron Iota, and as previously stated, they can be used as a mount. I will now demonstrate overriding a Fire Claw Strider in the wild, and we'll see how it does against the nearby Apex Frost Claw with the help of another Fire Claw Strider. It's pretty awesome hunting with a team of raptors on your side. I feel like Owen Grady. Our overridden Fireclaw Striders emerged victorious over the Apex Frostclaw. For more Claw Strider overriding videos, check out Holding Cell Games' YouTube channel. They have an awesome playlist of machine battles including some unique mounted combat on Claw Striders. I'll provide a link to their channel in the description. I highly recommend taking a look. While slow as a mounted machine, the Claw Strider can be pretty reliable in combat, making it a worthy override. That concludes this installment of Machine Spotlight, where we took an in-depth look at the awesome Claw Strider, as well as its variants. Let me know what you think of the Claw Strider in the comments below. Which variant is your favorite? If you know anything about me from previous videos, you know I love dinosaurs, and one of my favorites growing up was the Velociraptor, thanks to movies like Jurassic Park. I was ecstatic when the Claw Strider was first revealed as a new machine for Forbidden West. While I love the design and execution, I do wish it was a bit faster as a usable mount, and I think it would have been cool to have an adhesive variant that could slow down its prey before going in for the kill. Maybe Gorilla is just saving that for a Dilophosaur machine. If you learned something new from this video or enjoyed it, click the like button and subscribe to my channel, and check out my other Horizon Forbidden West content like the rest of my Machine Spotlight series. We are getting pretty close to the halfway point for covering all the machines in the Forbidden West. As always, I'm Noxious Asp. Thanks for watching.